This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. Then you believe that when you have the presence of God, you come to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can The word of God admonishes us in the Bible to live in the spirit and avoid the desires of the flesh. And in Ephesians 4.30, Apostle Paul let us know the consequences, hallelujah, of grieving the Holy Spirit. He let us know that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. And that scripture, Ephesians 4.30, also let us know that the Holy Spirit is our seal. The Holy Spirit is our mark. The Holy Spirit is our brand. The Holy Spirit is our guarantee for redemption. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.30, if you take a careful look at that scripture, we were talking about it last week, how the Holy Spirit is what you know, God has placed on those that have come to believe in Christ. The Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is God's mark of ownership on that believer. So on the day of redemption, on the day of the Lord's return, it is the Holy Spirit that is found in your life that identifies you as God's own. The Bible says in Romans 8, 9, that anyone who does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to God at all. So the Holy Spirit of God is the mark of ownership upon the lives of believers. Hallelujah. If you take a careful look at Ephesians 4 to 5, you will find some of the acts that Apostle Paul listed by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He listed, told us so many acts that can grieve the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The third person of the Trinity. He's the mighty person. Hallelujah. The carrier of God's presence, the power of God, my God. You need to know who the Holy Spirit is because as a believer, you cannot say I'm a Christian, but I do not have the Holy Spirit. There is no way you can live a victorious Christian life without the Holy Spirit. There is no way you can even serve God without his Holy Spirit. You cannot pray without the Holy Spirit. You cannot worship God without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit present in the life of any believer. Everything the believer is doing is just noise and activities. There is no presence of God in it. Then, I don't know how anyone can serve God without his Holy Spirit present in the life of such believer. The Bible says they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So Ephesians 4.30 says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read it quickly. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption my God it is the Holy Spirit that guarantees you that you will be saved on the day of redemption the, 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 there's a difference between the day of conversion and the day of redemption the day of conversion is the way that you were transformed you were changed you were you, you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's marvelous light when you gave your life to Christ you were converted from a sinner to a Christian. Hallelujah. But you cannot stop there. You are set on a journey, on a race. You must get to the finish line. And that finish line is the last day when Jesus shall come and judge the whole world. The day of rapture. And the Bible let us know right here in Ephesians 4.30. Hallelujah. That the Holy Spirit is the seal upon your life is what joins you together with Christ. The Holy Spirit is your guarantee 
that on the day of the Lord's return, you will be totally saved from the darkness and sin of this world and the evil in this world. And we shall come face to face with the Almighty God. So if the, the believers in Ephesus, they were already born again. They had received the Holy Spirit of God. And Apostle Paul indulges them. says, do not grieve this Holy Spirit that you have received. Why? You need the Holy Spirit to be able to get to the finish line. He told them, do not grieve him at all. Because there are consequences when the Holy Spirit is grieved. What are the consequences? There are several consequences. It affects your destiny, your journey, your Christian life. You cannot do anything. You cannot do what God has called you to do if you do not have the Holy Spirit of God in your life. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church. It doesn't matter what you're currently doing or not doing. What assures you that you will be saved on the last day is if the Holy Spirit of God is present in your life. There are many consequences, but the primary one, the most critical one, is what I just talked about. Hallelujah. You will have no guarantee for eternal redemption. If Jesus were to come today and he says the Holy Spirit of God, the Bible says in Romans 8, 9, that anyone that does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to God at all. And if Ephesians 4, 30 is letting us know that the day of redemption, when Jesus shall come, He's going to say, who has my Holy Spirit? Because that is your mark. That is what stands you out. When he looks and does not find his Holy Spirit in any believer, that believer stands in danger of eternal flames of hell. Hallelujah. What are the causes? What can cause people to lose? If you look at those believers in Ephesus, and this also applies to you and I today, they were born again. They were already filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. They were on a journey waiting to get to the finish line. And Apostle Paul told them, do not lose this Holy Spirit that you have received. Do not grieve him. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit, I always tell people, he's a gentle man. He does not force himself on anyone. When you welcome him, when you invite him, and you mean it with all your heart, he comes into your life and he stays. But when you grieve him by practicing, by indulging yourself, engaging in the acts, some of the acts, and much more, some of them were listed. If you look at Ephesians 4, 5, Apostle Paul talks about different things like stealing, um, um, adultery. He says, do not leave your old way, anger, bitterness, all ash words, rage, slander as well as all types of evil behavior he listed it right here all through the book of ephesians especially three four five he talks about different things that believers must not you know uh, 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 indulge themselves in and he says these things can grieve the holy spirit and when the holy spirit departs from the life of any believer all that is left is just noise is fruitlessness and may that not be your portion in jesus name may that not be my portion as well i cry to him every day holy spirit you are all i have without you i am nothing without you i will be useless without you i cannot do anything holy spirit please tie me close to you live in me let my heart be a home for you do not depart from me because without you I don't know what I'll be or what I'll be able to do. I'll be dead. That is what I cry to him every day. Please stick with me. Please stay with me. Please help me to live a life of holiness and righteousness. Help me not to grieve you. Hallelujah. Remember, God is a holy God and his eyes cannot behold sin. So it's prayer that we must all pray for our flesh to be crucified so that all this fruit of the flesh that is listed here in the Bible will not, hallelujah, cause us to stumble, will not cause us to grieve the Holy Spirit. What are the causes, hallelujah, when one is dominated by flesh, 
it grieves the Holy Spirit of God and it causes him to depart from such believer. There are so many examples of, you know, people in the Bible who grieve the Holy Spirit. And if you look at the record, if you look at what became of them, the Holy Spirit departed from their lives. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about some of them shortly. I want to talk about what are the causes? What causes the Holy Spirit to depart? Number one, when the voice of the flesh is louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they listen to me. They do not hear the voice of any other. Hallelujah. Some of us are more attentive to our own voice than the voice of the Holy Spirit. I remember many years ago when I was working as a, co a consultant and you, as a consultant in this part of the world, they would give you all your money. They expect you to go pay your, ta your, your taxes and your, 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 yourself, you know? You're not an employee. For If you're working as a full-time employee, they would deduct the tax before they give you um, your, 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 your take home, um, you know, income. So, but when you're working as a consultant, they give you everything and they expect you to go pay your tax yourself. So I remember many years ago when they would give me my, the, the, you know, the entire money before I pay my tax to God, I would deduct, you know, de, you know, do the calculation myself and deduct the taxes, deduct employment insurance, deduct health benefits, deduct pension, even though I wasn't paying any of those things. I would deduct all of those things so that I can reduce the amount to as much as possible before I give 10% of whatever is left to God and say, this is, this is my tithe. I remember God because of his mercy. I was, I was praying one day. He said, Tessie, I want you to read the book of Acts chapter 5. He gave me the scripture. I opened it quickly and I read the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And I saw how they withhold, hallelujah, they withhold some amount of what they got from their possession and they brought the rest to Peter. And Peter said, Ananias, he said, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? So when I read that scripture, the spirit of the Lord told me that, Tessie, that is what you are doing right there. I wept and I cried. I went on my knees. I prayed. I said, Lord, please have mercy on me. God had mercy on me. And I changed from that act and I never repeated it again. Hallelujah. So I tell you sometimes when our flesh is louder than the voice, the, when the voice of our flesh, our own voice is louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit, it can cause the Holy Spirit to depart. Now, yours may not be what I just talked about. Yours may not be you, you know, taking out of your tight or trying to reduce your tight amount. Yours may be uh, you having addictions. You, you may be hooked on pornography. You may be taking bribe. You may be, you, you may be, you, you may be committing fornication. You may be involved in adultery. Whatever it is, please. I would encourage you and I would indulge you the same way Apostle Paul indulged and begged the believers in Ephesus. I am also begging you right now by the help of the Holy Spirit that you must do away with everything that displeases God, anything that has to do with sin, anything you take a stock, look at your life, anything that you know that you are doing that does not align with the word of God. You must do away with it. You must turn a new leaf so that you do not grieve the Holy Spirit. God is a merciful God. Hallelujah. He would have mercy on you if you ask him to do so and truly mean it from your heart. Praise God. What is the second thing that can cause the Holy Spirit to depart? Living in disobedience. Saul, hallelujah, is an example of this. If God and his grace do not rule us, Satan and sin will take possession of us. This is what we see in the case of Saul. Praise God. Saul was empowered to do the work of God. Hallelujah. But Saul did not allow himself 
to live in disobedience according to the voice of God. Hallelujah. He went ahead and always does his own thing. That is not how God expects his children to live. When we and because of how he was, you know, you know, how he was carrying out that act, living in disobedience, we know what became of him. Hallelujah. God gave allowed, allowed evil spirit to overtake him and took possession of him. Hallelujah. It is a dangerous thing. So want the Holy Spirit power just simply to work for God. In the mind and in the eyes of Saul, he was working for God. But guess what? He was working for God, but he wasn't working with God. He was living in disobedience. I always tell people that it is much more important and far better to work with God than just to work for God. The Holy Spirit that you have received wasn't given to you. Just for you to work for God. The Holy Spirit was given to you to walk with God. When he say move, you move. When he says sit, you sit. When he say go, you go. God, Jesus is our master. So we wait to hear his voice before we act. Hallelujah. So quenching the voice of the Holy Spirit and going ahead to act according to our own leading or according to our own thoughts. It's very dangerous. We may have the power, we may have the gifts, but if we are operating without being in sync with the voice of the Holy Spirit, it can quench the, you, you can keep quenching the, the voice of the Holy Spirit and a day may come where he may just depart from that believer. We receive the Holy Spirit not just to work for God, but also for our personal character and our personal holiness. And say, Lord, it is your will, not my will. Whatever you say, I'll do. Whatever you send me, I'll go. Whatever you tell me to say, I'll say. We need to live in obedience with God like this. So that we do not quench the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we do not end up grieving His Holy Spirit. And number three, hallelujah, that can cause the Holy Spirit to depart from the believer. is refusing to control one's earthly desires. We see this in the life of David. David, who was a man after God's heart, did not control his earthly desire. He could not control himself. He saw another woman's, another man's um, um, wife and he started to lust after her. And we know what became of him. Praise God. In Psalm 51 verse 11, David cried unto God. He says, take not your Holy Spirit from me. He says, do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Every time I read that script, that passage of the Bible, I always say, wow. David knew. He knew how important it is to have the Holy Spirit of God in his life. David wasn't crying to God and said, do not take my crown from me. He wasn't crying to God and said, do not take my kingship um, title or my kingship position from me. But he was crying to God. He says, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That is a man who knows the importance of the Holy Spirit of God in the life of a believer. Hallelujah. Do you still wonder why Ephesians 4.30 says, that you should not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, that scripture says, is your guarantee, hallelujah, that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Praise God. So number four thing I'm going to give you, number four point that can cause the Holy Spirit to depart from the life of a believer is when you're working against God's plan. We see this example in the lives of the Israelites who God had brought out of Egypt, but their mind, hallelujah, was still full of what they ate, what they drank in Egypt. Praise God. They kept getting in the way of God's plan. They kept grumbling, hallelujah, because of the spirit of unbelief. Praise God. The Bible says in Isaiah 63 verse 10, it says, but they rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. I tell you, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. To grieve someone means to offend someone, to cause someone to be sorrowful, to make someone sad. They rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. Listen to what happened. So God became their enemy 
and fought against them. Praise God. They were getting in the way of God's plan. God has better plans and better purpose for your life. But sometimes when you find things happening, you become so short-sighted. You become so drowned by the circumstance and the situation around you. And you start to complain. You start to doubt God. You, 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 you allow fear and the spirit of unbelief to overtake you. Tell yourself, I am not going get in God's plan. I'm not going to get in the way of God's plan. I know that God has got great and awesome plans for my life. I know that these afflictions, hallelujah, they are for but a moment. My eyes are fixed on Jesus. I know what God has shown me. I know what he has told me. I know that the one who has promised is faithful to bring his promises to pass. You must fuel your mind with God's word. You must saturate your mind with God's word. You must not allow yourself to get in the way of God's plan. You must not work against his plan for your life. Hallelujah. Some of the things that you're going through, they are made to happen to take you to your next level. God is made to shake some things off you. Hallelujah. The afflictions, the suffering that you may be facing right now is nothing to be compared so the greater glory, the greater weight of glory that is coming upon your life. Be patient and keep trusting God. Hallelujah. So, number five, cause. I'm going to tell you, number five points, I'm going to call, tell you that causes the Holy Spirit to depart from the life of a believer. is squandering of one's spiritual heritage and gifts. Squandering of one's spiritual heritage and gift. We see this in the life of Samson. Samson was born during a time of national disgrace, oppression, and rebellion against God and his people by the Philistines. So Samson was a divine child. He was a divine baby, divinely sent by God. To, come and, uh, uh, to be a judge and deliver his people from the hands of the Philistines. But you know what happened, hallelujah. When Samson got here, he was carried away, hallelujah, by his own earthly desires, by his own fleshly desires. And that is what we call squandering of God's spiritual heritage and gifts. Squandering of God's anointing and resources. Hallelujah. Although Samson was empowered by the Holy Spirit, but Samson allowed himself to be dominated by his flesh. Hallelujah. Today, and we all know what became of him. My God. We know what became of him. The Holy Spirit departed from him. Hallelujah. Note today that there are so many people here who God has sent here. To come and be his ministers, his priests, to come and be the one that will spread his gospel message, to come into this world and build his kingdom. But when they get here, they get distracted. They start building their own kingdom. They get distracted by the cares of this world. They start to worry about what they shall eat, what they shall drink. They start to, you know, think about building house more, you know, acquiring properties, houses, cars. Fat bank accounts. You know, they start to build their own earthly kingdom. They allow themselves to be distracted by the cares of this world. God has put in so much potentials on so many people. He has put so much gift, hallelujah, on so many people. But when they get here, some of them are even born again. They've made a born again confession. They are Christians. They go to church, hallelujah. But slowly, slowly, they get carried away. They become sidetracked by the cares of this world. They start to worry about their own earthly kingdom instead of thinking of the kingdom of God, which is the assignment why God sent them to this world. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you that when Samson became distracted, became sidetracked, what happened? The Holy Spirit, the Bible records, departed from him hallelujah even though you are born again i don't know where you are uh, currently at in your journey with god hallelujah i don't know if you are burning for him or you're not burning for him but i want to tell you that you should be very very 
conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life because you do not want to lose the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That happened in the case of Samson. The Bible recorded in, 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 in Judges 16, 20. Then she cried out. That is the lilac. The lilac cried out. Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When Samson woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. Judges 16, 20. Samson did not realize that the Lord has, had left him. Hallelujah. We can get so used to our slow backsliding that we do not even notice when the Holy Spirit departs. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God gives gifts without repentance. I don't know. You may be functioning in the gifts. You may still be able to be involved in so many activities. You may still attend church services, Sundays, Mondays, Fridays, you know, how many days a week. But I tell you, it's all noise. It's all fruitless. It's all activities. If the Holy Spirit of God is no longer with that believer. So you must live your life in such a way that you avoid all those things that Apostle Paul listed here. In the scripture, in the book of Ephesians, hallelujah. So you must sit down and examine your life. You must cry to God and say, Lord, if I have done any of these things and your spirit has departed from me, you must cry to God like David did and say, Lord, please do not take your Holy Spirit from me. You must cry to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me and fill me with your Holy Spirit because you cannot Hallelujah. Be marked as God's own on the day of redemption. Again, I'm going to remind you what the Bible says in Romans 8, 9. It says anyone that does not have the spirit of God does not belong to God at all. And Jesus said on the last day, many people are going to say, Lord, Lord, but he's going to tell them, depart from me. I do not know you. I pray that that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus, I want you to lift up your hands as we pray now. Oh, dear precious Holy Spirit, we invite you into our lives to fill us once again tonight. Baptize us once again. Holy Spirit, we need you more than ever before. Especially in these end times when we know that the coming of the Lord is very near. Holy Spirit, we cannot afford not to have you in our lives. We need you to serve God. We need you to live a holy life. We need you to be able to serve God in spirit and in truth. Dear precious Holy Spirit, please fill us afresh tonight. Fill us one more time. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray that you rebaptize your people with your spirit of truth, with your spirit of fire, with your spirit of holiness, with your spirit of righteousness. Fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit one more time and help us to live our lives in such a way that we do not cause grief to the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit of God will not depart from us so that on the day of redemption, we will be marked and branded as God's own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, if you are not born again, I want you to say, Dear Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me every known and unknown sin. Translate me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your marvelous light. I believe that you are the Son of God. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. From today, I am saved. I am now born again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you just said those prayers, congratulations. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this program. Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.